Guys, how are we doing today? We are going to be talking about how an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it's funny because uh, just as I was coming out here to start shooting this video, I had a call from a customer who had an, well, I guess it's not, well, it's kind of funny, <laughs> but he was asking to get a value on a replacement model for a John Deere 770. You know, he happened to have a tree fall on his 770 tractor, and I mean, it just demolished it like point blank. Couldn't have been any worse. <laughs> so, you know, while I say that dropping a tree on your tractor is going to be a really common way that you could break your tractor, I don't think so. You know, but uh, I do, surprisingly enough, get a handful of customers in here every year that are buying a tractor. They got an insurance check in their hand because something like that happens, whether it's uh, a fire, which is probably the most common thing, you know, the most common reason where somebody has a fire and burns up the tractor, or at least, you know, it's, it's enough of a loss where they get a check cut to them and they're shopping for a new one. But yeah, a tree, uh, that's happened before too, and I tell you, this one was a bad one. But if you need a parts tractor, or you're looking for some parts for a John Deere 770, there might still be a few that can be uh, scrapped off of this one here. So let's get into it then. Let's go over the most common ways that people break their tractor. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you hit subscribe, read the description, all the links in there. Go to the website, goodworkstractors.com. Would love to help you out with a tractor and attachment, delivery and financing too. Here we go. Shoving a log, a stick, a branch, whatever it might be, right through the front grill of your tractor, okay? You know, you got the battery right behind there. You got the radiator, uh, the fan, everything else, and then obviously the engine block back in there. But depending on how aggressive you are, you know, how perhaps out of control you could be, you could cause some significant damage if you're not careful. In a recent video when I was using this tractor out in the woods, I was getting a little carried away. And uh, in fact, with the brush crusher here, you know, a log had come through this way, long ways, and worked its way right through there and uh, ended up hitting right down here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this area right here, I got pretty lucky there, but um, it can happen. You know, it happens. This is the kind of thing that can just occur in the blink of an eye before you know it, and it's too late at that point. So, you know, just a reminder to be careful when you're on your machine too, but uh, that's one of the very common ways that folks are going to damage their tractor is right through the front grill of it. You see a lot of them that are bent up, banged up, and and that's why I'm a big proponent of getting some sort of a deluxe, an all-encompassing grill guard if they make it for your model. The 1025R, they don't make such a thing. So take a look at this ram cylinder here, okay? This is in the fully extended position, the uh, widest stroke that it could have right now. And, you know, I do think when engineers are, I would hope anyways, that when they're putting together the, these machines and they're putting everything, sizing it appropriately with the cylinders and the hydraulic system and the steel thickness and this and that and the other thing, that they're designing it to be used and they're testing it in every sort of application. However, you will hear, you will read about um, fully extended uh, cylinders like this being damaged. You know, say you are using the bottom edge of the bucket right here, you know, and you're driving forward or you're pulling backwards and you're scraping the surface, that kind of thing. You know, I think that it's okay to do that, uh, perhaps not in the fully extended position. You know, you got to use common sense here, right? I mean, it just looks like it could, could get damaged in this kind of scenario, right? So, again, do I think they're designed with some sort of um, intent in mind? Yes, I do. But, again, it comes down to common sense. You know, r you'll read about it on, like, Green Tractor Talk or Orange Tractor Talk. I would encourage you to check those websites out, too. They're great forums full of tractor owners of all the kinds of tractors that we're talking about here. It's just a great wealth of information. Uh, they're problem solvers on there. They have some really creative ideas too. So again, just a, I'd encourage you to check it out, any of you guys that are tractor owners. I know a lot of you are on there already. So again, be aware of this. This is a common way. This is a common thing you're gonna hear about folks damaging a cylinder on their uh, loader from a situation like this. You know, Don't go too fast driving forwards or backwards. Again, that's when you get out of control and bad things happen. Take it nice and easy. You know, pull that cylinder back in a little bit there, get a little bit more control, a little bit more, you know, um, ruggedness, I guess, out of it there, for lack of a better term, and you'll be good to go. So if you follow my channel long, you know that I used to have a John Deere 3046R. Now I've got the 4066R. Doesn't really matter, as this applies to a lot of the subcompact and compact tractors, and I appreciate the fact that somebody pointed that out in a recent video as well. But a lot of these valve stems here are going to be completely unprotected on these smaller tractors, and I don't really know why. I'm sure there's an associated cost with welding on a little surround or protective structure right around the valve stem, but it can't be that much. So when I was out working, trying to blaze a trail through my woods last summer, I think it was, maybe last spring, 
I was working that sucker pretty hard, and it was real muddy and everything else, and um, I ended up just, you know, tire was spinning. I was in four wheel and got sideways on this muddy slope, and as it was spinning, that sucker just caught a branch, and before I knew it, tire was off the rim, and my day was done. And it didn't completely rip the valve stem off, but it just disrupted it enough where it lost the bead, it lost the seal, and you know, that was it, that was done. So that's one of the common ways, you gotta be aware of that. And I don't know of a real workaround for this problem here, but it's a common situation that will happen, especially if you're working in some pretty nasty um, environments, you know, but something to be aware of and don't just think you can always go plowing right through it because if you get sideways, because I was on a little bit of an incline, you get sideways, you're spinning, you just slide right into a log or whatever it was, and boom, you know, kaput. Common way that you can break your tractor. Guys, I've talked about it before. I want to talk about it again. I'm telling you, maintenance, just that regular routine maintenance, it goes a long way to prevent breaking your tractor, okay? So you look in your manual, the oil filters, the oil itself, you know, it does not need to get changed that often, you know? We're talking about every 200 hours here for a lot of these machines. So very infrequently or once a year, as, as the manual will say. So one of the other common things, the more common thing that you need to do on a regular basis is to grease the machine, you know, grease those Zerk fittings. They're very easy to do. It's one of the ways that you can prevent premature wear out on your bushings, you know, on different uh, front axles that are gonna have Zerks on there and, and just different attachments even. So, you know, so my father-in-law just came back recently from Arizona for the winter and uh, I showed him the new grease gun that I had and he said, oh, I gotta get me one of those, you know, because yeah, I get it. We can all change a grease gun, but it's just not a fun process. So if you can make it simple, make it easy to do, then uh, it's going to make that process a lot more uh, frequent, right? You know, so innovative product here. This is going to be lube shuttle. All this is right here is just a protective cover. But these grease tubes, seriously, all they do, they just screw in and they screw out. You can change it with different kinds of grease then. So if you have different applications or you want to go back and forth, you just get a cap that'd be off the other tube of grease and screw it back on here, store this one. There's no springs or anything else. All you, all you do, really. I mean, you just take your tube of grease, you put it in here, you tighten it down, and you're good to go. Yeah, so if you go to Lube Shuttle, I will put a link in the description below, so make sure you read that. It's lube-shuttle.us. Buy something from their store. You can get a whole starter kit or just the gun or just the replacement tubes of grease. Uh, you get 5% off with code GWT, so 5% off your order. These tubes are recyclable. You use 99.9% .9 of the grease that's in there. You can also refill these. You can reuse these tubes as well. So there's a lot of good benefits here. It's a smart product. I like that kind of thing. And if it's easy to use, you're gonna do it more often. If you think about it, your three-point hitch is really designed to pull forward, to pull attachments and go forward with it, right? So, you know, a rear blade, a box blade, a land leveler, a tiller, a brush hog, you name it. You know, a million attachments you can hook onto your three-point hitch and pull forward. But what happens when you push backward? You know, I mean, you could do that with a box blade. You could do that with a rear blade, you know, with a handful of other attachments, I suppose. Um, but typically when you hear of damage to your three-point hitch, it's going to be in those situations when you're pushing backwards. And it's not that you can't do that with these uh, machines. You can definitely push backwards, but you got to keep that in mind, you know. If you really think about it, they're designed to pull, you know, okay? So using the tractor's power to pull this way. And when you're pushing back, I think you want to be careful. Just be a little bit more aware and cognizant of the fact that, you know, when you're pushing backwards, that force is all being exerted right back onto the base of these uh, three-point arms here. And, you know, I don't know. I'm not a John Deere engineer, but I have heard enough times of damage happening and damage occurring when you're, when you're pushing back, you know, where it's you know, breaking an arm or bending an arm or if there's damage down here at one of the links or bending a top link or whatever it might be. Something to be aware of because I've really never heard of breaking something when you're driving forward. It's more often when you're pushing backwards. In the tractor world, you know, with your power reversers, you can change direction on the fly. You can even clutch and change certain gears on the fly. But all of our hydrostatic machines, they are not designed to go from you know low to high or low medium high whatever while you're moving you need to come to a stop before you change the range otherwise you could really inflict some serious damage and you'll for sure hear some grinding noises and the same can be said for transitioning or engaging the four-wheel drive or front wheel assist that is intended to be done at a standstill not on the fly at the very least you know at a almost creeping halt or a very very slow movement it's just not a good thing to try to shift that on the fly and switch your range switch from two wheel to four wheel or vice versa bad move don't do that okay so this one is a bit of a conundrum to me you often hear about three point mounted backhoes 
breaking tractors, just splitting them right in half because the frame can't support it. There's too much load on the three-point hitch uh, being placed and being exerted versus what a frame-mounted backhoe would have, which this is going to be a frame-mounted backhoe here. And anything essentially that's going to be branded, you know, Kubota or John Deere or, you know, Massey's backhoes or Coyotes, all that kind of thing, those are generally going to be frame-mounted backhoes where there's supports that go all the way up underneath here and, and really hold that whole structure together to um, spread out the stress, you know, of, of the load, the torque, the force that's being applied. So three-point mounted backhoes, I have never personally seen this happen, but I tell you, you read it all the time on forums and, and different locations where if you get an aftermarket one, you put it on the three-point hitch, you're risking a chance of breaking it. So I think that may be true to a certain extent. I think though, if you use your head, you know, you're using the tractor within its, and the backhoe within its um, normal operation without really trying to push it to the limits, I think folks are gonna be okay. It's one of those things you're gonna hear all about and something you wanna keep in mind if you're asking about it on forums or to other dealers or wherever it may be. You know, one thing that drives me nuts and another common way to break your tractor is gonna be actually breaking these lights off the side of the ROPS mount here, okay? And the rollover protection system that we have. I don't know why John Deere hasn't got with the game and done something different. Now they do offer for an upcharge, you can buy a steel, a metal brush card that goes around here to provide some protection. But I'm telling you, this is one of the super common things that you'll break on your tractor. You will see a lot of folks that actually just unbolt these things, unscrew them, and put them right on the inside of the ROPS here, okay? So that is a good idea as well. You're going to get a lot more protection, you know, when you're inside the, the fenders here. You know, otherwise when you're going through the woods, you know, along field edges, that kind of thing, it's super easy. A branch comes down and just whacks them. And, you know, if you're lucky, it's just going to break one of these lenses here. But if you're not so lucky, it's going to break off the whole thing there. And then you're bungeeing the thing on here. And they're about $90 or so, at least right now, uh, to replace one of these one of these whole fixtures. So I'm telling you, super common. Be aware of that. You know, it's pretty easy to reroute them, put them on the inside here if you want to tackle that. But uh, yeah, watch out. You know, so one of the common areas that these John Deere tractors get damage on them is really going to be on the seat. You know, the vinyl will tear, it'll rip. You know, if you carry a pocket knife or another tool in your pocket like I do, um, it's easy when you're sliding on and off to just rip and tear those seats unintentionally, okay? Um, one of the good ways to protect that is with a John Deere seat cover like this. This is for the 1025s, the new style 2025s. Uh, links in the description below to it, but a nice way to keep all that grime. You can see here, even as I get on and off on a regular basis, it's starting to get <laughs> dirty up here, but just put this thing uh, on your seat. It's going to protect it. Cheap insurance there. Gets the dirt on here. It keeps underneath clean. You can wash this thing if you need to. And, you know, if something tears, it's going to be this seat cover here tearing unless you're, you know, taking a knife and stabbing it. But uh, good cheap insurance there for your seat. Keep it looking nice and new. So I see two really common areas when you're trailering a tractor that you could have damage, okay? And so the first one is going to be on the hood. You know, those things go flying off. You know, I think somewhere in the manual, it'll tell you um, proper procedure to trailer your tractor. You know, I try to put a little strap or a bungee or something across the hoods. We've had it happen here. You know, we've had it uh, happen on tractors getting shipped into us. The other common area are going to be with canopies, okay? Those are notorious for maybe not blowing all the way off, but at least bending in half and, and breaking and being unusable after the fact. So that also poses a danger to other folks that are driving down the road as well. So make sure those things are secured. They're very expensive to replace and they could be a danger to others. As far as canopies go, I would urge you to check out the Rhino Hide canopies. There's going to be a link below in the description there. But, you know, uh, Don there over at Rhino Hide, you know, he made this thing, he drives over it, he hits it with the sledgehammer, he shoots it with a gun, you know, he runs into tree limbs and all that kind of stuff. It really is about the toughest canopy that I've seen in the market. It's also easy on and easy off. And so why that's important is for trailering applications, you can quickly, easily take that thing on and off. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it flying off. And it also helps in that regard getting it in and out of your garage too, especially if you have a height restriction that you're working with. You know, so this is it right here. I'm telling you, once you get that thing put on, get the brackets in place and everything aligned, it really is an easy on, easy off system. Again, link is in the description below. If you purchase through his website there, you'll get a link to a survey or you'll be sent a survey to fill out after that, after the purchase. Say that you bought it from Goodworks Tractors and you'll get 5% off your order. So I've talked about it before and I'll talk about it again. Underbody damage, undercarriage damage here very easy to have happen and it's not an operator's fault necessarily you know it's just 
look at all the stuff that's underneath here. And there's just so many things that could get damaged, you know, things that I've done, things that other folks have done, ways that I've never heard of. There's always a new way, you know. And so uh, recently I did a video, you know, I was out in the woods and I got back here and a few days later, I noticed just a, a few small little drops uh, of oil on the ground underneath the middle. And so I took a look underneath there and I had sure enough just put a tiny little hole, little dent right in the hydraulic filter that's tucked up underneath there. And it's not even down here, it's, it's way up in there. And then, uh, you know, I had a buddy, one of my good friends, a year or two ago, something like that, he was using his 3E series tractor and somehow a stick went up all the way through here and messed up his whole four wheel drive system. And, you know, I, it was over $1,000, I think, to have that repaired. Um, I was on Green Tractor Talk a couple of years ago. I remember seeing it on there. A gentleman had a, a, one of the new 2R series tractors, I think it was, if memory serves well. And uh, he had his mid mount mower linkage down here, didn't have the mower on had a brand new pole barn that he just built and was going in from outside and pulling into the garage right up on the concrete there. Concrete had a lip on it. When he went up on the front wheels, well, that undercarriage, the uh, arms, the brackets for the mower deck were hanging down and smacked right into uh, the edge of the concrete. That was an expensive repair as well. So there's just a lot of ways you can damage the bottom side of these tractors. And again, Where's the skid plate options at, you know? I mean, I know it could be expensive, an expensive proposition, and maybe, you know, maybe a lot of folks would just take the risk to not have a skid plate and, and just uh, roll the dice, you know? But I think there's a market for it, you know? Can we come up with one? That is certainly not an all exhaustive list, but it is a list of the very common things that I see, you know? Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention too, those cab doors, you know, if you're trailering down the road, Secure those cab doors. If one of those things flies open, oh man, those are a bear. Those are expensive to replace and a complete nightmare. Of course, always dropping something on your hood, rolling your tractor onto the side or rolling it over. Those are just horrible situations as well. So again, a lot of ways to break your tractor. This is all meant to uh, get you thinking ahead of time. So you use your tractor more safely, more effectively, and uh, you just have a better all around experience with it. So again, if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you read the description, go to all those links, check out the accessories, go to Goodworks Tractors. Again, love to help you with a tractor or an attachment. Until next time, take care. We'll see you soon.